Okay, this is an extension of what we kind of already covered, but I'm going to do some wet blending, not using our plastic kind of palette. I'm going to actually blend the colors on the paper using some water. And again, every time you do this, I'm dabbing on the side. There you can see me dab on the, on the cup there because I don't want to add in too much water. I'm also, if you notice, I'm cleaning my brush every time I do a new blend between um, another color. And I'm always paying attention to how much water I'm getting on the paper because I don't want to add in so much water that I start to degrade or dissolve the paper fibers. So always be conscious of that and be conscious of how much water you're using. Now remember to always clean your brush before you dip it into your new clean water. You can see my dirty water on the top left and my clean water on the top right next to each other. Notice how well these blends are going and that is because these colors are next to each other on the color wheel. Now when we start to talk about blends that don't look so good or don't aren't attractive and it's when we start to get into muddy waters or muddy blends it's usually the fact that we're mixing complementary colors so be cautious of that whenever you start to get in or, or the result is some kind of gray or mud muddy type of color remember that it's probably because you got complementary colors next to each other that you're blending. Notice that I've also kind of labeled the cool blue violet versus the warm light blue and make sure you differentiate those. Some will mix better than others as far as warmer colors and cooler colors so be conscious of that. I'm also practicing what I determined a cool gray. If you dilute that cool gray um, as opposed to a warm gray, notice the dilution actually turns a little bit of blue before I even start to mix that bluer um, marker into it. Notice how strong that black is throughout the entire thing. And then of course I'm labeling. And again, these colors are are really close together. The gray is a cool gray and I mixed it with blue and black. Notice that even the black is kind of on the blue side, even though it's a black um, color. And here I'm mixing other colors that are kind of close together. They're all warm uh, colors. Brown can be a darker orange or even a darker red. So I wanted to see how those go together when I blend those. Notice how, how always I think red is going to be like a stronger pigment, but it's, it's kind of weak as far as pigments go. It's almost as weak as yellow goes. Watch what happens when I mix this yellow in with this green and how much that green just kind of takes over that blend. I'm just kind of muting that yellow. So maybe next time I'll use a larger amount of yellow if I want a more yellow uh, saturated. And of course I'm always making notes and this time I'm making actually like a bigger swatch of yellow and actually making that comparison. So remember to always kind of do these experiments. Um, I'm using, by the way, I'm using watercolor paper. Um, even here, that yellow is pretty weak, even though I've added in more of it. Um, I'm using watercolor paper, and um, which is more resilient than our notebook paper, but still whatever kind of paper you can have to test out these colors, I think will be good. And remember to always just have fun experimenting and we will move on with our next exercise.